Yo, yo, what's good, what's good? We are getting ready to move out. <laughs> Look at all the boxes. Really big news. Oh, well, one, I'm moving out of my apartment. So if anyone in State College needs a six month lease for the spring, hit me up, man. I'm not trying to pay rent for a place I'm not staying in. I'm broke. Big news, we are moving to a fulfillment center. We're growing so fast. Like, it's kind of sad that I won't be packing orders anymore, but I mean, we're growing so fast that we're moving to a fulfillment center. So I'm gonna drive all the, you know, shorts, socks, shin pads, hoodies to come in soon. Everything is getting put into a storage facility and you order, it gets shipped out. Not by me anymore. So sad, but also we're going so fast. Thanks to you guys, really. I don't know, just so grateful. Never thought it would be this big, this fast. So just super grateful for you guys, seriously. Can't say that enough. We'll never be able to say that enough. But yeah, let's keep growing. Let's keep growing. I still use your guys' ideas, inspiration from you guys. So hopefully we can grow this brand to, we are, not hopefully, we are gonna grow this brand to, you know, a household name in the soccer community. But yeah, today's video, I'm gonna be going over my full journey. So like the really detailed version of my, my soccer journey so far, you know, all the ups, all the downs, every team I've played for, you know, just all that stuff. Uh, I think a lot of people will be able to relate to my story. And then if you can't, like, it was also just a, like, I like to listen to other people's stories because, you know, you get like a perspective on like other people's journeys and it's just like, I don't know, it's nice. That's, yeah, let's get, let's get into it. I've been packing up just, uh, you know, his room looking clean for once. I know you guys have been saying, oh, Shake's gifted me this. Shout out to, to Shakey Warrior. Let's just sit down and chat real quick. You feel me? So boom, boom. Where do we even start? You guys see I got the the combine uh the combine merch on. If you know me, I am if I get free anything, I'm gonna wear it. Like no matter what. Everything I wear is free. This uh these Nike Tech pants, free because uh you know I did the Nike glitch, got the Nike voucher. Literally everything free. That puffy, free. Everything in my closet, let's go look at my closet. I mean, not free, but it's my brand. Ooh, my brand, my brand. <laughs> Yo, should I release that? The Brexit tea? If you're a real one, you know about that. You know those days. Everything I wear, I get for free, for real. They call me the free gear king. I hate paying for clothes, but only only clothes I pay for is the we up gear. Should be mad expensive though. I'm telling you, those bulk orders. If you if you start your own brand one day, these bulk orders they're gonna hurt. They're gonna hurt your your pockets for sure. But yeah, let's get right into it. Today we're gonna be talking about my my journey so far. So from when I was a little kid all the way to playing for Penn State and to now where we're trying to, to play professionally. We're just gonna be going through the, the whole journey. It's been a long journey for sure. A ton, a ton of ups and downs. It's just, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy, but let's get right into it. The journey starts in my backyard. I was always just playing with the ball in my backyard, no matter what. I always love to watch skill compilations. You guys know ROM700, something like that. You guys know the channel I'm talking about. Definitely know it, but always watching skill compilations on channels like that. I was watching Ronaldinho. I was a huge Ronaldinho fan. Or <laughs> one time I told my mom when I was a little kid, I was like, I wish you married Ronaldinho. <laughs> That's that's a wild statement, but no, nah, I was always just in the in the backyard trying new tricks and skills, recording myself, do tricks and skills, you know, free kicks, stuff like that. And yeah, I mean, you're a little kid, so it wasn't. I wasn't. I mean, I was taking it serious, but like when you're that age, you think, yeah, I'm definitely going. I'm going to the prem. I'm definitely playing for a prem team as soon as I turn 16. Like you think you're a wonder kid. That's where my head was at at the moment. I was playing for local teams. I played for Anderson Monarchs. Shout out to Anderson Monarchs. I played for a ton of teams just in my area. I played for South Jersey Elite Barons, Lower Marion, Germantown Soccer, like really any team that I could get on for free. I was like the biggest club hopper. I was like, I was like Zlatan, like I'm, I'm club hopping everywhere. 
when I was a kid. Just like, I would, I would like play in a tournament with a team and then actually be playing with a different team. But like any team that would take me and like not have me pay, cause like it's so expensive. Like you guys know, like youth soccer is so expensive. I was, I was playing, you know, that's what it was. Then, I mean, I was also on Union Juniors around then and Union Juniors was kind of like, before Union Academy, it's like before you're the age of the Union Academy, you're on Union Juniors, so I was on that. And, you know, I guess at that time, you could say I was definitely like a highly rated player, I guess. But I mean, obviously you're so young, so it doesn't matter, but I was definitely, you know, a good player. Like, I mean, uh, my, not my U14 year, but I'm like U13 and U14 starts the academy. So I was playing a year up on the Philadelphia Union Academy. This is the first year of academy. And boom, I'm playing. I mean, I'm not playing, that's the thing. I was a, my first year on Union Academy, I was a sub and you know, obviously it sucked, I was frustrated, but at that time I wasn't too mad because you know, I was playing a year up. I'm like, I made the academy a year up. So I was like, okay, I'm just gonna, you know, be a sub this year and then Next year, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, you know, be the man. Not the case at all. Next year rolls around, we get a new coach, a coach from Liverpool. I, th I mean, I think he was like at Liverpool Academy or something like that. And the day before our first match is when I realized I wasn't gonna be starting. And I was like, you know how if you're not starting the day before a game, you'll be in the possession with the non-starters. Like you can kind of just tell in training before the match that like you're not going to start and that's what happened and I was like at that moment I was so gutted like I couldn't even train well because I was like in my head I thought I was so good and then I wasn't starting and I was like wow like I didn't even know what to do didn't know how to feel I felt embarrassed I felt all these different emotions I got into the game for like 15 minutes I mean didn't play that good and then cry like cried my eyes out after after the game keep in mind like this is like my whole world like I've never known anything but this game and I like wasn't, you know, starting. And I was like, what? Like, I'm not starting. Like, I, I can't do anything with soccer if I'm not going to even start. And so that's how that went. That That's how the whole year went. My uh, U14's year, you know, wasn't playing, you know, lost confidence. And after that year, it was, there was two options. Like, not two options, but like, you either made the U16 Academy. So like, you like went up a year or you were on like the basically the B team which is uh or the U15s and I was on the U15s uh that was actually a really good year for me that was probably my best year at Union Academy we weren't playing the best teams but I got to play every weekend I got I did well I was playing like attacking mid trying new stuff in games trying skills I thought I was good you know I was cooking still not like fully confident cuz I knew I wasn't like on like the best team but like at the end of the day i was playing the game i love i was with my friends every day at ysc academy ysc academy was a uh, another thing in itself that's a whole nother story but i'll i'll dive into that real quick before i continue the journey ysc academy was the uh basically the school for if you played for the union academy so we would train in the morning at uh like 8 a.m something like that do school do school and then uh, train in the afternoon and you know all day we're just joking around with our best friends and then we're playing soccer after so that's another reason why I, I enjoyed being at the Union Academy and everything is because like the school too like you know I was with my friends goofing off playing around playing video games and then training like it, it was so fun but yeah boom U15 year it goes well it goes all right. The next year, I still don't make the academy. I'm on the development team, which is just another, there's always a version of the B team basically. And I was on the B team again. And at that point I was like, okay, like I can't stay here. Like I have to, I have to leave to get real game time. Like I have to play on a proper team. Like they, the union obviously doesn't have any plans for me. Obviously I'm not gonna, you know, they're not gonna sign me to, a pro contract here like and that's my goal always was always to sign a pro contract so I was like I gotta go get game time somewhere else like they they just don't they don't rate me basically is what it was and uh like that was fine I understood it they would always say like you're just you know you're too slow you're not strong enough whatever the reason was like 
I was a really late bloomer and I guess like that was a big reason why they never rated me was like I was you know always on the slower side and then I was like super skinny and I was pretty short for a while like I definitely grew like my junior and senior year but before that I was definitely a shorter shorter player but I leave I go play for FC Delco or at the time it was called FC Continental but FC Delco is what most people probably know. Played there for three months. I played winger. I'll throw some uh, FC Delco highlights right now from winger. I was having fun, to be honest. You know, I was playing, so that was fun, but I wasn't really doing that good. Like, I was doing okay. Like, I'd have a few good tricks in here and there, but I had zero end product. I wasn't scoring any goals. I wouldn't get any assists, and we wouldn't win any games. So, I guess it wasn't that good, but... You know, at least I was enjoying it more because I was playing and stuff, but boom. I end up moving to Florida. I got in contact with a, a team in Florida called the Clearwater Chargers, and I stayed with a host family there. Like, I trialed there. They really liked me. They wanted me to come and play for the team, and I was so down because, I don't know, I loved it. This was the, so far to date, like, the best soccer experience I've ever had. Not, like so far to date now, but like in my story, if you know what I mean, like so far in my life in the story, it was the most fun I was having. I was playing every game. I was like a key player. I was playing center defensive mid, like I was finally hitting my growth spurt. So I was like stronger, faster. And not only was I hitting my growth spurt, but like my physicality started to become like a strength of mine. Whereas before physicality was like a really big weakness. So I'd get bodied off the ball. I get paced, whatever, boom. Playing really good, starting to finally get like scouts looking at me from uh, from colleges and stuff. Finally, you know, hitting my groove, I guess you could say. Before I had zero offers and now I'm talking to a lot of different schools. I end up committing to Stetson University and I definitely think I jumped the gun committing, but keep in mind, like I had never gotten any love for, from any colleges. So as soon as I started getting like receiving scholarships, I was like, oh, this is awesome. Did my visit and my visit was actually, which is funny because you guys know I went to Penn State. I'll get to that. But my visit to Stetson, my official visit was a match versus Penn State. So I was watching them play Penn State, the school that I was gonna end up going to. So boom, I'm playing good and I get invited to play with the Tampa Bay Rowdies in like a, a trial. I go to the trial and I do really well. Like the, the coach likes me and he ends up putting me at center back. So for the first time ever, I'm finally playing in a professional environment and it's so sick. Like I'm just over the moon. Like I love my life right now. I get to wake up, go train with a professional team. I'm living the dream. And you know, doing that, I played against Orlando City. I played, you know, I played in actual game, like friendly is not, like actual games, but friendlies. I signed an amateur contract, which is basically like you're on the team, you can play games, but you're not getting paid so that you can keep your college eligibility. I was doing that, everything's going perfect. I'm still committed to Stetson at the time, and then boom, COVID hits. Now, something happens with Stetson that I can't talk about, but I end up decommitting. The coach left and like, I didn't think it was a, the best spot anymore. And in my head, I was like, man, I don't even wanna go to college. Like, I wanna go straight pro. Like that was like really my mindset. I just didn't, I didn't love the idea of college to be totally honest, even though it ended up being the best decision of my life. But boom, decommit, I have no school and then COVID hits. So I have no school. I can't even visit other schools because it, there's like, you know, COVID, the pandemic and whatnot. And I'm not even playing because no teams are playing. Like, so I feel like I was like mad nervous. I was like, oh shoot, Femi, you're screwed. And then, you know, I'm talking to a few schools on the phone. They're not giving me a whole lot of money because at this point, like, they can't see me play anymore and they don't have a lot of money left because it's late in the process and blah, blah, blah. But, you know, I'm about to, I'm talking to a few schools. I was talking to, like, UNC, uh, USF, you know, random school, like, a lot of different schools. And then Penn State hits me up. They see my highlight tape and whatnot. And, they, you know, they offer me a pretty good scholarship. And... Um, I take it like it on the phone. Like I, I was on the phone with the Penn State head coach and I was like, yeah, I want to come here. Like lock me in. And it just happened that fast. And the fact that that happened like this was like a, like a dream, honestly. It just like, it just made so much sense. I didn't even have to visit there. I'd already trained there at Union preseason once and it just made so much sense. I was so happy. Like 
I knew it was a big school, like they had really good facilities. So I was like, I committed on the phone, like probably my first phone call. I'm in. Boom, I'm at Penn State, you know, freshman on campus, just a whole new world, to be honest. You know, I come from a small little school, from YC Academy. I literally had like 15 people in my graduating class. And now I'm at a school with like 50,000 people. So whole new experience. Preseason goes well, but the, the first season gets canceled because of COVID. It's just such a mess. Like COVID was such a mess. I was depressed a lot of the time. I was, I have alopecia areata. So it means like, it's like an autoimmune disorder. Like a, it's like some people say it's stress induced. I really don't know what it is exactly in my case, but like I lose my hair. And at that moment in time, I was losing so much hair. I was like so close to going bald, you know, I was, you know, dealing with COVID, like not being able to see people. Like it was just such a, a stressful time or maybe not stressful, but depressing. But I mean, soccer is definitely something that kept me motivated. It kept me going. And you know, I was still doing pretty well in soccer. I was still training hard and stuff. I'm pretty like humble. I guess you could say like, I realized that like, it's going to be a lot of work to start to like be a starter on the team, but like I still that is still my goal, is to be a starter on the team. Boom, first game rolls around for, for Penn State. This is still like the pandemic, so we ended up playing in the spring, but yeah, first game for Penn State, I realized I'm not starting, and I'm like, oh my God, like I'm back to square one. Not starting, like this is the same thing as Union, like I'm like mad nervous, I'm like, is this gonna, is this how it's gonna be all my four years? Like that comes around, I don't start. I get in the game, the first game was against Maryland. I think we won like 3-2. Uh, I get in, play okay. But yeah, just still really like, damn, like I wish I could start. Like I want to start. Boom. So the next couple games I don't start, but I play well. Like two, like three games go by, I'm not starting. And then I finally get my start, but I get my start at right back. And it's a position I never really played. I got recruited as a center back. The Rowdy's coach put me as a center back and I was a center back ever since then. But yeah, I was playing right back and I ended up playing that my whole freshman year. I didn't start the first three or four games, but... After that, I started every single game at right back. And it was a really good learning experience. Like I wasn't like a key player. I wasn't like a really good player on the team, but I was just kind of, you know, I played my role. I did my job. I listened to the older guys. Like I was kind of just, you know, I was like, hey, if I'm playing, I'm happy. That's, that's really what the motto was. Like if I was playing, I was happy. And that's like the truth. Like I just cared to, I just wanted to play. You put me in any position, I just wanted to play. You know, always in the office looking at film and stuff, but developing physically, cause I was, you know, still a little bit on the skinnier side, but uh, yeah, I was really just taking the year to learn. And I was like a really, like I was a role player for sure. Like I didn't have the in most insane impact, but I was solid. Like if a winger was coming down my side, people could trust me to, to defend well, basically. And I did that my whole freshman year. And that's definitely some advice I would actually give if you're going into your freshman year of college. Like I would worry first about like, you know, playing a role, you know what I mean? Getting your foot in the door, getting your foot into the starting lineup, but that's for another time. Boom, year ends, we have a you know, pretty good pretty good year. We didn't win anything, but we got to the final of the Big Ten tournament, and we were second, I think, in the league. And then we got to the Sweet 16 of the NCAA tournament, I think. That went okay, it went, it went well. And then at the, I remember at the end of year meeting, I was talking to my coach, I was like, hey, like, I know I've been playing right back, but I wanna play center back. He kinda said, yeah, yeah, like maybe we'll see. The depends on the personnel, but right now I see you as a right back. And I didn't really see myself as a right back. Like I knew I could play in college, but I didn't see myself as a right back at the next level, I guess. But I mean, I don't know, who knows? I think I can still play it. But sophomore year rolls around and I start at right back, but then a couple games in, I get my chance at center back. I have a really good game. I believe it was against UPenn. It was against UPenn. Someone either got injured or something but I got moved to center back and I played really good. I had a lot of good uh, long passes. I defended well. When I was right back, I really worked on my 1v1 defending a lot because I was always defending the winger. And I guess that helped really helped me, you know, develop my center back game, I guess. But boom, playing all the sophomore year, I'm playing center back. We end up winning the Big Ten. We win the Big Ten tournament. And then after the Big Ten tournament game, like we played Indiana, we won 3-0. It was it was snowing. It was so it was so cool, so cool. But after the game, we have a party. This is a whole nother story, but we have a party and it's at an apartment. All the guys are there and boom, whatever. The night goes how it goes. Cuz we, you know, we partied cuz we won the, the tournament. 
the, the Big Ten tournament and like we won the double. So obviously we're gonna have some fun. Everybody got sick after that. Like the whole team was down bad with the craziest flu and we ended up losing because we had a buy. We had a buy in the NCAA tournament. So we lost in a game that like technically we were the favorites. We were like, I think we were top 16, maybe even more top eight, maybe something like that. And we lost eight to two to Hofstra. Like they cooked us. And that was like the most, that was one of the most embarrassing moments to be honest of my whole college career. Like before the game, I was like, we were on liquid, not liquid IVs, like the IVs that hook up to your arm. And it was just, it was a nightmare. It really felt like a nightmare, honestly, after such a good, good season, but whatever. I don't know, still a really good year. I learned a lot, I played center back. So I was happy with that. Going into junior year, I made it a huge goal of mine to bulk up and get bigger. Cause I was definitely on the skinnier side for a center back, like scouts would, not scouts, but like people would mention it like, hey, you might want to gain, gain a little bit of weight, get stronger, get more explosive. And yeah, that's one thing about Penn State. I definitely got a lot faster in my time here, just more explosive and stronger. But uh, yeah, my sophomore spring going into junior year, I was so about my diet. Like I would have, I was so strict about it. I would have three calorie dense snacks every single day, three big meals. I would cook every day. I would cook salmon, chicken, steak and always have it with like rice and veggies like i was so strict i would stay in i would never like i would, not never i would still go out have fun from time to time but like not really like i wasn't really you know doing like i wasn't doing a lot i was really just focused to be honest like it was probably the most focused i've ever been in college for sure but yeah that definitely paid off i gained like 15 pounds and then come the season i lost like five or seven pounds so it was like i was in a really good weight i was feeling good i was stronger bigger faster but i was also that i wasn't like too bulky you know i was still doing athletic exercises i wasn't just like weightlifting in the gym but boom junior year comes around and you know i'm playing center back i have a lot of goals for myself like I just, so many things I want to achieve. I want to try to have such a good season that I can go straight pro straight from this year. You know, get a, I have high expectations. I wanted to, you know, get a GA or like, you know, try to just do my best so I could just finally achieve my dreams of going pro. The year goes okay. Like I thought I played good, pretty good, not like amazing. I played good, you know, I had a good year. Like we conceded way too many goals. So like, I guess you can't really say as a center back, you had a good year if you're conceding a lot of goals. Yeah, it was it was a pretty mid year, definitely really over underwhelming. And I knew that like I was gonna be back for my senior year. I knew that pro at that moment was not an option just cause I wasn't gonna get drafted as a junior. And like, I didn't have a good enough season to, I was like still really confident. I just thought we had a really underwhelming year and that, that like, yeah, basically. Senior year comes around, senior summer. I go on a few trials in the summer like that my coach helped me set, set me up with. You know, that's one thing about the Penn State coaches. Like they want you to, play pro after you know they want you to do your four years but they want you to they're still going to help you at the uh play at the next level so they hooked me up with some some trials over the summer did that it went well i went to sweden that was really cool uh i liked it there a lot it's such a cool env environment uh the, their professional scene is just like the fans are crazy they're showing up to training i was like I never experienced something like that but it was sick yeah that was cool it played well and going in i was just really confident i'd been working hard all summer and i knew this was the year that i had to like you know really perform if i wanted to make it to the next level like this is the year i have to have a good year to you know put myself higher in the draft and not even the draft because the draft doesn't like the draft is not end all be all, but I just, you know, I knew I had to have a good year. So, you know, worked really hard, was really confident. First game away at Pitt was such a sick experience. Sold out crowd. They weren't even letting people into the stadium after like halftime or something like that because there were just so many people or even before the game, I don't even know, but such a sick environment and really good season. Like really cool season. Uh, loved my teammates, loved the games I played in. And if you were keeping up on the TikTok, like it was just really, it was definitely my favorite season by far. Uh, most successful. I wanted to win Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year, and I did that. It wasn't my only goal. There's a lot of goals that went undone. Like I wanted to make the Final Four. Didn't even make the NCAA tournament, which is a whole nother story in its own. But boom, now we're at where we're at now. We're just trying to trying to make it pro. And yeah, 
the goal right now is to go pro and that's what you guys are watching right now is that's the goal I'm trying to be a professional footballer it's been the the dream since i was a little kid i've never wanted anything more in my life i've never worked as hard for anything in my life this has been my dream since i can remember so that's where we're at now i hope that kind of you know summed up the journey i might have missed some things if you think i missed something comment but yeah a lot of ups a lot of downs it's been a it's been a really really nice ride so far but not all nice but you know what i mean but yeah looking forward to what's next the draft is on december 19th on tuesday so i mean we're in that but yeah, we're gonna see what happens with that and then go from there. No matter what happens next, I'm gonna work my ass off to, to, to try and make it. So yeah, I'll see you guys maybe on draft day, maybe tomorrow. I just have to see. I have a lot of packing to do, a lot of stuff to do. So I can't promise a video tomorrow, but I'll do my best. All right, peace, we up. How's man talk about pressure? I don't feel pressure. Boom, boom, boom. Yeah, boom, boom, boom. So boom, and then boom, 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 boom. Playing, boom, whatever. A boom, boom.